to the grass. That's more than 100 yards. Oh, excuse the language. <laughs> that was a little bit more than I thought on the first one. practicing with today it's a 12 foot heavy duty casting ocean master this is put out by bass pro really heavy duty as you can see by the stats here it's 12 foot surf caster for conventionals 6 to 12 ounce lure weight going to use a beautiful newell 338 Loaded with four, over 400 yards of 80 pound braid. This has what is known as carbon coil technology, which is basically mixing glass with uh, graphite in the mix. And when you do that, you're going to get the snap to send it out, but you're also going to get the uh, strength that fiberglass allows. All right, guys, when I bought this reel, this is a Newell. Um, it's a, see what model is that? This is the um, Newell 338. So when I had this, it came with the bracket, but there was no um, screws on it. Now, if you know, if you go on eBay, which is probably one of the few places you can get the OEM original parts, they go for like over $10 just for the boat because it was made for this. So I found a solution. I went to uh, Home Depot today, got this. And the cost 96 cents with tax, all right? So, and if you look at it, the only difference between this and the original part is that it, it has the uh, slotted head here for this tool, you see it fits in perfect, the number eight. Not eight millimeters, but number eight. Now, normally you would just have a slotted single screwdriver hit, um, uh, fitting on the top, but this one here, you just have to buy this, or most people already have it already. So, let's see now. And this, the real seat on on this reel uh, on this rod it's kind of thick it's the uh, ocean pro it's a 12 footer you saw me doing a um recent unboxing i got i got two of these this is the uh the uh one for casting it's the c model so this is meant for conventionals the s model is for heavy duty spinners but as you can see the three quarter works perfect on this so it's so you know it's up to you um, a lot of people like to go with the original parts this is fine see pretty, that's pretty much it I just have to tighten it down that's all you have to do it will save you a lot of money Okay, this rod is a heavy duty rod. It's rated for six to 12 ounces, which is a lot. So a good range. I start with a five and I move up to my sweet spot, which is the eight. So I'm just gonna be practicing with it today to see what this rod can really do. And one of my um, watchers on my channel commented, he says, why would I want to burr out the lead? You know, meaning put a scissors in here or any sharp object and burr it out. The reason being is that normally I would use squid line or monofilament line and yes, I don't need to burr it out, but I'm practicing today. I'm not gonna put a mono over here. I'm just gonna go directly with braid. And as you know, braid cuts 
very easy on 18 sharp. So when you get a used one, like see, this is oxidized, it's used already. Notice, no burrs, right? It's nice and smooth. But see, this one and this one, freshly poured. Look on the inside of that. Sharp burrs, sharp edges. That's the reason why I burr it out is because I'm, I'm only practicing. And if you hear, like, like I am in a park right now, you don't want to kill anybody or smash this to a windshield because the braid cut against those sharp edges. See how sharp that is? Because it all, all these silvery ones are freshly poured. And all my used ones like this, they're all oxidized and rounded off already. So that's the reason why. Also, when I practice, see, I don't just go through one time. You can, but I don't. I go through times. See? It's a lot safer because, like I said, we're in a park. Thank God I'm the only one at this park today. And I'm just going to put, uh, let's see if I got enough time for it. No, I don't. I'm going to put a uh, very simple knot on this one, a Palomar. See, I, I went through it twice, right? Loop it around. There. Yeah, no need to cut it off. Just leave it like that. That's pretty strong. And as you can see, it's looped through twice. So it's for added security that it's not going to break off. Okay, when you cast a conventional reel, you can really burn your thumb, which means a lot of people put their thumb right on the line and they use this as a break when they cast. And a lot of times, because of the heat from the friction, it burns your thumb. So what they do is they um, spray some water on it. Yeah, see now. There we go. <laughs> Spray some water on it to to wet the line so it won't burn. But there's another way you can do it. They, they, we call it thumbing. And you thumb the side spool. Now, when you throw the line out, keep everything off the spool for at least the first second or two. Because of the the... the uh, the spool is that getting to optimum rotation and just when you feel that it's starting to slow down don't put your thumb on the line put it on the spool you know there's line here now but when you but when you get enough line out some of this would become exposed and you can put your thumb on the side that's called thumbing now being a, 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 a archer myself years ago there are products out there that help you with this. Um, I've been explaining this to people for a while. You can use a pad here. Now the pad will, when you, when you slip this over your, your finger, look at that. It will slow it down, but you don't get the great feel. What I like to use is this type. You know, we the archers use this so you don't um, tear the skin off your thumb or or just, just bring that skin all the way down to it's almost like bare bones. This is great. You can put it on the line, but I wouldn't. I would still thumb the side, okay? But I've tried this. Actually, this is pretty good. I kind of like this one. Um, it's not cheating. It's just, you're just saving wear and tear on your thumb, and it does work. All right, when I cast, I make sure my lid pretty much equals up to where the first guide is. You don't have to do that, but that's more for distance. All right. I'm going to try this pad again. I kind of like this pad. I mean, it's the first time I'm using it for this type of application rather than uh, archery. Swing away. As soon as it swings in, Ooh, not bad, not bad at all. Okay, I'm just gonna place this one on the ground. See how it's I, I, I place on the ground, and then I'm walking back until the line's taut. 
that's what we want. Ho! Oh. Jeez, that went into the grass. The last time I did that, that, that was like about, I think it was 95 yards or 97 yards from this little knoll I'm on to the uh, grass. But that one went into the grass. Oh boy, hopefully I can get my lead back on this one. All right, this cast, I'm just going to set up. See, what I normally do is I bring the lead closest into me like that. See how the line stretches out? I bring it, the, the lead closest into me as possible like that. And then I keep the line straight and that's how I normally throw it. But let's just see, we're gonna put this one further out like there, stretch it this way. Okay. Oh, about a little shorter than the other one. I kind of like the other style because that way I can whiplash it out there. I like that whiplashing part. So I'm going to use my uh, digital electronic uh, measuring device here. I'm going to clamp that on near the tip. Let's see now. If memory serves me correct. There. Just loop it around. And that should be good. Let's see what we got here. You notice I'm in a uh, direct line here. So this is my starting point. Ooh, I'm actually moving the lead across the grass. That's not good. Walk a little bit faster. Okay. That's good. I remember when I was using my uh, other rig here last year, my um, Blue Yonder 7000. Man, that thing is such a great caster. It was constantly going into the grass and I didn't want to lose my lead, so I stopped doing that. And while I'm walking, I'm using my thumb to get the line back onto the spool. But you try to do it tight, you don't want it too loose. At least it didn't go in the tall grass, because there's a chance I might lose it in the tall grass. Well, maybe it is in the tall grass. I didn't think it went that far. Eh, it did go in the grass. Shoot. All right. What does the uh, counter see? I'm at 89 and a half. So 89 and a half meters. I'm going to have to figure that out. Okay, I just cut my lead off my line and I threw the excess in the garbage can. Make sure you don't leave any of this stuff around. I talked to the park guys over here. Uh, they don't mind you coming and practice at the soccer field, but you know, they're trying to maintain the field and when you leave lead 
on the ground, what happens is, is the, the, the lawnmower goes through, hits it, and there's a five, sometimes a $5,000 bill the city has to put up to repair that lawnmower. All because some people leave these behind. So, and they came up and talked to me. They said they know who I was, but to please put out a message to anybody who wants to use, continually use the park, please pick up your lid. Otherwise, in the future, they're not gonna allow us anglers to come here and practice anymore. Keep that in mind. Thank you.